conflict is essential to every story that we tell ourselves or to the ones that we listen to, that we watch, and that we read. And so in order to understand conflict better, uh, this lesson is going to go through the different types of conflict and how they impact storytelling and theme. The purpose then of conflict, uh, before we dig into it, let's just make sure to review a few key terms that I'll be using. Uh, first is protagonist, and that's the fancy word, right, for the main character of the story. Antagonist then is whatever is the major thing going against the protagonist. And the that could be a broad range of things, right? We'll talk about them more specifically as we get into the different types of conflict. In every story, uh, the pyramid that you see here is Freytag's pyramid, and most stories told in a modern context follow this pyramid of structure. And so in the beginning of the story, we have the exposition. That's where you get the setting and the main character and a little bit of a hint at that main conflict in the story right about there. Once you're aware as a reader or when you're watching or listening to the story, uh, once you're aware of that, the, like the hint at that at that conflict, um, that's when the rising action happens. And so the rising action is where the main character, that protagonist, faces all sorts of different conflicts. They can be small conflicts. Uh, they can be small conflicts that then lead to bigger conflicts. They can be crazy, big, epic battles with bloodshed everywhere and lots of loss and mayhem. Or it can be a quiet but angry feud between two best friends. Regardless of what the conflict is, whether it's small or big or encompasses everything, uh, it's that when it's in the rising action, the protagonist has to face those conflicts, or if they avoid them, then there's consequences that might lead to other conflicts, right? But this is the meat of the story. That rising action then builds to the climax of the story, and that's when the protagonist has to face the biggest conflict, their biggest fear, the source of all their troubles, and make a decision. And so depending on that decision that the protagonist makes, it sets it into the falling action where there will be consequences from that decision. And so this is where we learn the impacts of all of those conflicts and how they're going to resolve in the story. And then in the resolution, we can reflect on what sort of lessons we've learned from the story that we've just participated in. And so overall, the most important thing I want you to be noticing here is conflict is in the whole of the rising action, the climax is all about conflict, and then the falling action as well. And so the, the meat, the, the biggest parts of the story are all about conflict. Conflict is essential to plot. Without it, you're not gonna stay, stick around to, to hear the rest of the story um, because it will be quite boring, right? We love drama as human beings. Um, so in all the variations of telling a story, there are many different types of conflict and being able to identify the different types of conflict will help you to analyze them and understand them in a deeper and more meaningful way. So the conflicts that we will go over, they're not limited to like fist fights and you know, these big open arguments. Um, conflict can be any form of opposition that the main character faces. Uh, some are going to be resolved very clearly by the end of the story, things work out and there's a happy ending, right? Other times authors might um, leave the conflict big and vague um, and make it bigger than the story. So a good question to ask yourself if you're reading a story that doesn't resolve the conflict is why would the author do that? Are they trying to make some sort of commentary on the real world and about how some conflicts are just unresolvable? Uh, as we go through, I just wanna give you uh, a preview of the six different types of conflict that we're gonna cover. And so the first one is uh, in the category of internal conflict. And so this is the person, the protagonist versus themselves. The rest of the conflicts are more external conflict, person versus person, person versus society, person versus technology, person versus nature, or person versus fate or the kind of supernatural. So we'll discuss all these in more detail starting with the first one of person versus self. Now, this can sometimes be called a psychological conflict, um, but it's the conflict that takes place within the mind of the character. So it usually has something to do with a choice, maybe choosing between right or wrong. Um, it might have something to do with overcoming their emotions uh, or mixed feelings, their doubt and uncertainty about something. And so it'll be this internal conflict where they decide what is the right thing to do person versus self is all over young adult fiction, it shows up in almost every story because much of growing up is about wrestling with the conflicts and shaping your identity. Uh, a great example of this might be in the Harry Potter books 
uh, Harry Potter continually struggles with whether or not he's going to be strong enough and up to the task of beating Voldemort. Um, sometimes he struggles with the internally with the guilt he feels that he wishes that he wasn't the chosen one, um, that he didn't have to do it in the first place. Um, regardless, the, what's at the heart, does the protagonist even bother to struggle? Like, do I have what it takes, right? Um, do, do they take the easy way out or the harder, more rewarding path? Um, it's through the storytelling and how these internal conflicts of a character are resolved that we really learn the character's inner strength and what they're worth. The next conflict we're gonna go through is the person versus person. This is uh, often called physical conflict, um, but don't let that be misleading. You can have a physical battle between two characters, but it can also be an emotional or a strategic power battle as well. Uh, this is the classic protagonist versus antagonist, that traditional form of conflict, tried and true good guy versus bad guy. This type of conflict is one of the easier ones to identify uh, because it's filled with drama, right? Um, and usually it's quite clear because there's another character that the protagonist is going up against. Or a really uh, popular example would be Harry Potter versus Voldemort. In our next example, we have person versus society. And this is a social conflict. It's when the main character struggles against his way of life, um, the culture that he fits into, um, and whether or not he really does fit into that world. Um, but it's him going against society. This could also be a character that might be fighting against a specific law or maybe some certain rules of the culture um, that they're supposed to abide by. It could even be maybe a child going against parents or against teachers. But the society becomes a character kind of of sorts. It's a thing that the protagonist is fighting against. And to be clear, all of these conflicts, all of these different types of conflicts can show up in every type of genre. So they're not limited at all. In the story Divergent, which is a dystopian kind of sci-fi novel, um, the protagonist Triss fights against the division of her society into four factions. So a lot of the conflicts that she encounters is trying to fight against the division of these different groups and how each of them is supposed to behave. Um, in the second example here, it's a realistic novel. And in The Hate You Give, it is about a 16-year-old girl, Star Carter. She is a Black girl who is trying to navigate her life between living in her mostly Black neighborhood and then going to a school that is mostly filled with white kids. So she never really feels like she's going to be accepted or um, by these groups uh, or really fit into either one. And so the conflict in the story is about her trying to figure out which society she belongs to and why she has to divide herself in the first place. Uh, the last example is a fantasy book. Uh, in Children of Blood and Bone, um, the main character, Zelly, has the power of magic, but that's outlawed by the king. And she has to hide in parts, run in other parts, fight um, and try to escape being killed. Um, but all of that conflict is about the fact that she doesn't fit into the society because she has qualities that that society doesn't like. In this type of conflict, person versus society, we learn how to stand up to unjust systems and what the characters are willing to do to sacrifice in order to make change happen in their society. And the next type of conflict that we will review is person versus technology. This conflict occurs when a protagonist is facing machines, maybe, or technology of some sort. It could be robots, right? Mechanical failure, maybe, um, if they're on some sort of vessel that's breaking down. Um, but they have to, the characters have to prevail against this breakdown in technology or this problem with technology. Um, it shows up in stories where the advances in technology might be being used in evil ways to manipulate, to control, or even to kill other groups of people. So when you notice plots where technology is being used to control others, there will most likely be overlap with the conflict of person versus society. Because oftentimes in these stories, uh, technology is used to enforce or to maintain the social and cultural rules. Um, so it's helpful to pay attention to how the technology is being used and if there is someone or a group behind it that is using it as a means to control others, right? Um, which can be a really interesting way to analyze the conflicts. Um, as technology has developed in, uh, in human history, so have the stories that we have told with this type of conflict. Sometimes popular books and movies will use technology or artificial intelligence in the plot, but the technology is not actually the source of the conflict. It's just part of the setting or part of the, 
um, the scene and the time. Um, make sure that you're careful when you are identifying conflicts to be sure that the conflict that you're analyzing is actually between the character and the technology. The next conflict is person versus nature. And this is when the protagonist is struggling against nature, right? Which makes it pretty easy to identify usually. It'll be sometimes of, or some type of outside force that he is working against. It could be a natural disaster, like a tornado or an earthquake, a tsunami, um, could just be bad weather in general, maybe wherever they are, there's like a really bad storm, um, cold, right? Uh, usually the character is then struggling to survive in whatever the, the setting is, right? Whatever that nature element is. A great example of this is Hatchet by Gary Paulson. Uh, Brian is stranded in the woods and he is forced to learn how to survive on his own. So there will be all kinds of uh, smaller conflicts that he has to deal with, but all of them are parts of nature. And so the whole major conflict for him through the entire story is trying to survive and just make it to the end, right? Back to the safety of, uh, of cities and, and humanity. Um, Jaws is another classic example of this type of conflict. It's a giant shark, right? Bent on killing any and all who dare to enter the ocean. This type of conflict often plays on the ancient fear that humans have. When we venture out into like deep water or some other unknown or wild territory, we're not sure if we're going to survive. And so that's a deep and an old fear for human beings, which makes it an interesting and fun story to read. The last conflict that we're going to review together is person versus fate or person versus supernatural. This is a classic, maybe one of the oldest types of conflict uh, when he or she must come to terms with their humanity or with their limitations or their insignificance, right? That they're just one person in the like the whole of human history and uh, maybe the, the, the cards were stacked against them from the beginning. In a person versus supernatural type of conflict, this is when the protagonist finds him or herself pitted against a vengeful god or some sort of powerful supernatural force. Uh, the Odyssey would be a great example of that. Uh, the example that I have on the far right of Romeo and Juliet, this is a beautiful example of person versus fate. Uh, the two main characters, Romeo and Juliet, are star-crossed lovers. They try to be together, but everything stands in their way. So there's elements of them versus society um, because they are from two families that are fighting. Um, their friends and their family are fighting. They have their own inner turmoil, so that internal, like them versus themselves, conflict of whether or not they should be together in the first place because their families don't want it. Um, but overall, there's this huge overarching conflict of them versus their fate. Because in the very first lines of the play, the audience is told a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventured, piteous overthrows doth with their death bury their parents' strife. So the whole play tells the story of how they were never going to get what they wanted. It's right in the first lines, right? They were never going to get what they wanted because it was just their fate to die, that it was only through their death that the families would finally learn their lesson and stop fighting. Uh, the other example I have here is Percy Jackson. Pots are always bigger than Percy. They have unlimited powers and strengths, but yet Percy always finds a way to overcome them despite his human flaws and limitations. In the last part of our review here, um, I think it's important to really think about, okay, so why is all of this conflict important? We can identify it, but why is it important? Conflict creates and drives the plot. So without it, you're not going to pay attention to the story because it'll be boring. Nothing will be happening, right? We love drama. And so being able to see what happens and the consequences of these conflicts uh, keeps us entertained and keeps us interested in the plot. Um, the, the way that the story unfolds then, it shares relatable problems with us. As we read, we see the emotions of the characters, the challenges that they face, and the decisions they make in order to tr just try to get through them, right? And try to carry on with their life. So over the course of the story, it reveals the theme of the story because those characters have to deal with these conflicts. And then we learn some of those truths of life. And overall, we're reading and paying attention, listening to these stories in order to figure out how to live our lives better. So if you can identify the conflicts and you can start to dig in and think about why are they so important to the story, that's where you can understand the meaning and what the author is trying to share with you about what it is to be human.